Hey everybody, this is Matt from Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews, and today I'm going to be doing a video that I've wanted to do for quite a long time, but I'm a little bit nervous to do, um, and that is my top 10 most overrated fantasy and sci-fi series. Uh, there's only one sci-fi on here, but this is the vast majority of this is, is fantasy. And I'm nervous to do this because these are all popular series, and so invariably, if you're watching this, you're going to see one plus of these that you're probably in love with. And you're going to say, Matt, what are you thinking? But I am in a lull of doing videos right now because I'm doing two reviews right now. And both of those books, one of them is 1,000 pages and one is 1,700 pages. So it's going to be a little while until I come out with my next review video. So I thought I'd mix it up in the time between then. So let's get this started off with number 10. And this is Raira um, by Michael J. Sullivan. And so Raira is um, an interesting series because it's split up into a lot of different like sub-series. And I really did enjoy the first series here, uh, Raya Revelations. I didn't love it, but I liked it. Um, but every series after that gets worse and worse. Raya Chronicles, I thought was like a little bad. Uh, Legends of the First Empire was not good. That was just bad. And then Rise and Fall, it's only had one book so far, and that's just garbage. Um, and I throw it on this list because I see Raira mentioned a lot. It's not like the most popular series in the world, uh, but it's regularly on top 10, top 20 lists of people's favorite series, um, especially for more modern fantasy books. Um, modern as in written relatively recently. Um, so I got to have it on my list. Um, moving to number nine, this is The Poppy War by R.F. Quang. I have only read two of the three books. I don't know if I'm going to get to the third. Uh, I probably will, but I'm really not looking forward to it. Um, and this book is like hyper popular. I see everyone talking about this book. And I thought the first one was good. The second one was horrific. Um, I just hated everything about it. I hate the characters. Um, I hate the plot. Um, I shouldn't say everything because I think the magic system in it is actually pretty fun. Um, but I can't read a book just for a, a magic system. The magic system is like the cherry on top. It can't be the ice cream. Um, and so, yeah, I, I've got a lot of problems with Poppy War. My main one is that it's not original. It's just telling a retelling of historical events in 1900s China and with different character names and a little bit of a fantasy spin. So I already know it's going to happen and it's not fun. And the main character sucks and I just not enjoying my time. Um, so, moving on to number eight. This is The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison. Um, I don't think Catherine Addison is her real name. I think it's a pen name, but I don't know her real name, so I'm sticking with Catherine Addison. And The Goblin Empire Emperor is probably the least popular book of my series, uh, but I threw it on here because it, it's just garbage. Uh, I hated everything about this book from pretty much the first page to the last, and I don't know why I stuck with it. Um, you know, I kept thinking that it was going to turn a corner and it never did. In fact, it got worse. And I mean, the, the way it's written is so horrible to me that, you know, it's got this, like all these formal titles that they use over and over. And they, um, they, they never say I, they say we, and they say all these weird things that like pull you out of the story. And the story is not good. It is supposed to be a political fantasy book. And I enjoy political aspects to books. Um, you know, uh, you know, my favorite parts of, of major fantasy series are the political machinations of these characters. And this book is all about that. But it never gets exciting. Um, there's one brief moment in about the two-thirds quarter where it's like, oh, this is going to start getting fun. But they resolve the drama in like two pages. So, Yeah. It's boring. It's like a, almost like a slice of life, but not a good slice of life. Uh, just an emperor kid that takes over an empire, uh, falls into it, and tries to keep the empire going with nothing interesting happening. So, yeah, not good. Uh, number seven. Uh, this is... We're going to start getting into the really controversial stuff here. And this is... The Broken Empire by Mark Lawrence. Uh, Mark Lawrence is like bigger than life, especially on like Goodreads. He's super popular and is really engaging with his fans. And so I think a lot of people um, 
a lot of people like him, I think, because he's so engaging. It's hard to dislike somebody if they're engaging with you. I find that. Um, and I wanted so badly to like this book because, like, Mark is like made comments on, on on Goodreads reviews I've made, and um, you know he seems like a really cool dude. But I just don't like these books. Um, they're written in such a weird way where it's like two storylines happening at the same time in the first book uh, of a kid, and then he's older, and they're happening simultaneously, and you're bouncing back and forth. And I think it's written like just to be cool and do something different when it's not needed. It would have been such a better story if it was written chronologically. Um, but it still wouldn't have been great because the main character is just like a horrible person. I can't find anybody in this book uh, that that I enjoy. Um, and the second verse is the second book's way worse than the first one. The second book is like four different storylines happening at the same time super confusing it's not like a highbrow you're supposed to be really smart to read it it's not kind of like a malazan where you could study it it's just like needlessly confusing um and <laughs> the plot's just boring uh i hate the guys that you're supposed to be rooting for uh, i like the people that you're supposed to be rooting against you already know what's going to happen because of the titles of the books i mean the first book is Prince of Thorns. The second book is King of Thorns. The third book is Emperor of Thorns. What do you think happens? You think maybe he turns into a king and an emperor? Yeah, kind of ruins the tension of these books. Um, so, yeah, can't get into it. I'm probably not going to give up on Mark Lawrence. Um, you know, I, I've heard very good things about some of his other books, and I've actually heard some people that dislike this series that like the other ones. So I'll give him another chance, but it's going to be a little while because I'm not feeling it. Uh, so, number six is Mistborn Era 2. And I want to specify this is Era 2, not Era 1, because Era 1 is probably on my top 10 favorite fantasy series. And this is by the one and only Brandon Sanderson, an author that I thoroughly love. And it saddens me terribly that Mistborn Era 2 is so overrated. And I don't get it. I don't get how this ratings for these books are so high. They're like above 4.5 on Goodreads, which is crazy high. I've heard, I think the predominant opinion I've heard in fantasy communities is that Era 2 is better than Era 1. And I don't have a lot of hair left, but it makes me want to tear out the remaining hair that I have. Because it's not, it's not good in my opinion. Um, you know, what made the first series so good is that it was an epic fantasy with an awesome magic system with amazing twists and it had this kind of fun mixed with serious tone to it and it did something pretty original um the ending was amazing and this other series it's like trying to blend a bunch of different genres together none of which i think brandon sanderson writes terribly well it's trying to be like a western and i like western books but it's not a good western um it's trying to be a, I think, kind of like an epic fantasy, but it's too short to be an epic fantasy. These books are, are small. Um, it's trying to be funny. And I lo again, Brandon Sanderson is a top five favorite fantasy author for me, but he's not funny. He, he can't write funny, but it's like he's trying to put on his Terry Pratchett hat and he can't do it. Because um, like he, Wayne, one of the main characters... And I find these people saying that he's like so awesome and so funny and maybe I'm just missing something. Maybe I'm that, you know, I'm just like this angry person that can't connect. You know, I feel like that older generation of people watching new SNL that doesn't like it, you know, and I, but I, I just don't, I can't connect to any of these, these characters. I do find Steris to be wonderful, but she's a side character. Um, the main characters are just uninspiring. The magic system is so much worse than the first series, even though it largely borrows from the first series, but it's way worse. Um, they're too short. You know, the twists are fun, but, you know, you can't write a whole book on, on twists. Um, and twists, I find, are better the longer a book is. When they suck you in, they convince you of something, and they spin it on you. But these books are so short that the, the spins don't have great payoff for me. Um, you know, it does expand the universe of the Cosmere and the, and the Mistborn planet, whatever it's called, in a greater way. But ultimately, I just find myself waiting for Era 3 and hoping that it, that, that it catches that magic for me that the first Era had. 
Um, so number five, and please don't kill me for this, but this is Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. And I am not a hater for Lord of the Rings. I gave all three of the books, I think, a four out of five stars. And it's on this list because it is most people's number one favorite series. And I, man, I can't agree with that. You know, it's not a top 10 series for me. I'm not even sure if it's a, t if it's a top 20. You know, I can't appreciate what it did for fantasy. That all of the fantasy books that I thoroughly enjoy probably wouldn't exist or if they did, they would be way worse off if Lord of the Rings did not completely revolutionize the genre. And, and, and not just revolutionize, but essentially create the genre. And, but I just, I don't get it. Uh, I don't get why people are so enamored with this. You know, I do like history. I also like history blended into my fantasy books. But it's, it's too much. Um, you know, there's like way over a hundred books of appendix just talking about all the different characters, people you'll never meet and their family trees and all this stuff where, you know, it, it, if you got like madly addicted to the series, I bet it would be fun to just eat this up. Um, but I'm not. It's a, it's a okay to good story. I think the ending is wonderful. But the journey there, it's very dated. Um, the way it's written is very dated. Um, you know, the, the lack of twists is, you know, very apparent. Um, you know, that the journey, the boring journey on some of these aspects, the very long time it took Frodo and Sam to get to Mount, to get up Mount Doom once they got into Mordor, um, is, is a slog. Um, so... I do like it. You know, I like it a lot, but it's way overrated. Um, number four is The Murderbot Diaries by Martha Wells. This is the one sci-fi series I'm putting in here. And I have to put it in um, partly because fantasy and sci-fi is, uh, you know, the fans are easily cross into both of those uh, genres. Um, and this book is so hyped up, um, the series. And... I got it the first book. I enjoyed the first book. I gave it a four out of five. Um, but I don't get the others. I can't conceive of how people are so into the series. It is the same book over and over and over and over again. With a couple different changes. You know, you've got Murderbot. He's got a personality type where he is kind of shy um he's a sentient robot who is not doesn't have a governor module on so he doesn't think like the other robots uh you know he's got this kind of edgy personality type also and he'll go on this journey with the humans and it's got this evil organization in the background that they're trying to solve some mystery for and he'll probably run into some other robot that plays kind of a goofy side character that's a murderbot story. They're short. They're way short. Um, and yeah, I just, I can't connect. And the price, oh my gosh, the price. These books are small. They're very expensive. Um, you know, all of these books combined would be the size of a large epic fantasy. But they're all full priced. And that's nuts to me. I mean, you probably would spend over, a, maybe not over, but dang near $100 for this series to get the size of book that should be, you know, 20, 25 bucks. So it's four times too expensive. And yeah, that's nuts. I'm not like holding my score off on that because I didn't buy them. I get all my books from the library, but it doesn't help. I'll tell you that. Um, so number three is The Books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft, um, a book series that I have routinely heard from people that is just amazing. And, oh man, it's a train wreck. Um, you know, in very common fashion for me in these books, I did enjoy the first one. Um, but man, it went so downhill. And I can't really tell if it's the writing, which I don't enjoy. Um, or if it's more the fact that my expectations were way different than what I got. 
because the first book is this fun story about a guy who loses his wife, literally loses her, when they go off to this epic tower that's the most important art of, you know, the, the most important monument on, on this planet. And it's like higher than you can see. And each of the levels that he goes up to try to find his wife, who's presumably in this tower, um, is a very different kind of world. And he, you know, he encounters this world and he moves up the tower slowly. Um, and he, you know, it, the, each, of the, each of the floors are very different and he goes through this, some zany adventure. And I was looking forward to the next book because so I'm like, man, they're all going to be fun like this. You know, he's going to go up each book. He's going to have three or four different levels he's going to go up. Um, you know, we're going to keep itching towards that progression. It's going to be a series of kind of short books within books, which I thought was kind of cool, but I didn't get that. He's staying forever on the same floors that are boring and samey. He's jumping up enormous levels. The characters are horrible. Um, you know, I do enjoy the main character, but he ends up not even being the main character by the end of the books. I mean, the other characters are getting way more screen time than him. You know, I don't find his central plot compelling. The decisions he makes, I think, are horrible. I can't connect with the character. I can't connect with any of these characters. Um, and it just, it feels so painful to me to read these books um, that I had to give it up by the last book. I started the last book and I just couldn't do it to myself. I couldn't do it. Um, you know, I don't want to hate read. I've done it before. I've done it up on books on this list, but had to give it up. Um, with a very serious distaste in my mouth. Number two is The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. And I struggled with this series because I invested more time in this series than I've ever given to a series that I thoroughly did not enjoy. I hated the first book, but I kept reading. And I think I read maybe ten of these books, maybe nine. Um, why did I do it? I don't know. Um, I was listening to them on audiobook, and at the time, I was really into running in the morning, and it just turned into the thing that I listened to in the morning while I went on my runs, and so it was like, you know, I'll just keep pushing through this, and I didn't know a ton about audiobooks at the time, and I didn't know all the books I'd be able to get from the library for free, so I, I just kind of stuck with it, and the main character is, and, and people fight me on this. But he's like this sexist pig that all he thinks about is like women and sex. And it's just so cringeworthy. Um, you know, it's like I can't connect with this guy at all. And the progression that it goes on, you know, the character growth, I feel like isn't there. The, the monsters that he fights against are not that interesting. I mean, a couple of the books, they got a little interesting, but I mean, the idea that you have this magical detective living in Chicago, Bill, for me, felt like he could have done so much more. I mean, he was fighting these people that were like relatively comparable in strength with him, but I feel like it could have been these huge epic fights with these like insanely powerful interesting characters he did go up against powerful people but they the, the interest level just wasn't there for me um you know it it just gets convoluted and the things that i find compelling about books with character growth and good dialogue and you know nice plot progression and fun twists it gets a very low score on all of those things for me and to have the main character be somebody that I just feel like is very chauvinistic and like he's very protective of women. Um, so, you know, I don't want to say that it's like sexist in like a men are better, better than women and women are the worst, but it's like this old school, you know, like, you know, early 1900s mentality of like women need to be protected and like, I don't know. It's just, and he's thinking about sex all the time and, it's just, like I said earlier, it's just very cringeworthy from start to finish in a lot of these books. And I was very happy when I gave it up. You know, I, I was struggling because I, I heard from several people that like the last couple books that have been in the series is not done yet, but the most recent ones are just incredible. And I really wanted to get there, but eventually you got to stop like killing yourself to finish these books. And so I gave it up. 
And that brings me to number one. Um, and this is The Broken Earth by N.K. Jemisin. And I give this book the number one slot for a couple reasons. One is it is a trash heap. I hated this book. And the other reason is because it is so highly rated. I mean, it's, I think all of the books in the series won um, major awards for like the best fantasy book for that year. And like the Hugo Award, I think it won. And oh my gosh, I don't get it. I, I don't, I'm missing something. I'm missing how a book this horrible could be considered so wonderful. I hate it. I mean, I could go on for a long time talking about how much I hate this book. And I did um, in, my, in my review. But to quickly summarize, without spoiling anything, because I don't like to spoil things. If you watch my, my channel, I never spoil. But the book is about... I can't even say it without spoiling it. I will just say that there is a major twist that happens in this book in the last chapter and I did not finish the book. I got 80, 85% of the way through and I gave up um, of the first book. But I already know what happens. And I know what happens is because the author is trying to be so cool and trying to set you up to really slap you with this huge reveal that makes you want to do that Brandon Sanderson thing where you hear these reveals and you go, oh my God, I should have gotten it. I didn't, but I should have gotten it. And now I want to go read it again with this understanding. And it's like, you get to enjoy the book twice at least because you get this totally different perspective. Um, and that's what she was trying to do. And I appreciate her trying to do that, but she failed because I figured it out by the fourth chapter. Um, and I suspect a lot of people figured it out. Um, and if you didn't figure it out, kudos to you. Um, I am usually the last person to figure out twists. And I love it that way. I don't want to figure out a twist. I don't want to get ruined. But it got super ruined here. And it's not so much that the twist got ruined for me. Um, it's that I think the author sacrificed a cohesive story to try to slap you with this thing that ultimately didn't work. Um, and so to give up cohesive storytelling for something like that is a crime against fantasy books. Um the characters are, oh my gosh, the characters are bad. You, I cannot connect with these characters at all. Um, they, they go through traumatic events and they act completely unfazed by these events. Um, like super traumatic things happen to children. And I'm a father of two little kids. Traumatic things to children are, hit me in a very personal place. Um, they weren't impactful to me. And not only were they not impactful to me, it was just so shockingly unreal how the main characters received this information and just moved on with their life right afterwards. And it's like, what? How would that? You would be, per you would be traumatized for the rest of your life. And you're acting like, like it didn't happen. Um, the writing style. Oh my gosh. The writing style is atrocious. It's like the author's trying to be really cool. Um, it's doing constantly like bolding and italicizing to try to do like these single words that are like, you know, I wish I could remember because I've, I've been intentionally just expelling it out of my brain, but like trying to really emphasize something to be really awesome. And it's, it's just really cringeworthy. I hate it. Um, not going to read the rest of the books. I can't imagine I would enjoy them. And as I read other people that dislike the first book, I, I don't know a single person that disliked the first book and liked the next next books. Um, so that is my top 10. I am sorry that I disappointed you, which I'm sure I did. I'm sure there are 0% of people that watched this from start to finish and said, yep, Matt, you got them all. Um, so my only video I've ever done where I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose some subscribers, but I had fun doing it. So if you stuck with me the whole way, I appreciate it. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you next time.